Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another polymer clay jewelry video at my YouTube channel and my blog. You know how when you wear a bracelet and the clasp often ends up at the top? Well, today we're going to use that to our advantage by making a focal toggle clasp out of polymer clay. So for a complete list of all the tools and materials you'll need to make this bracelet, you can look at the blog post link in the description box below or check out the links up here. So the first thing you need is some clay and the color isn't really important. I just grabbed a bunch of scraps of metallic so if any shows it'll look fine. And you want to roll that out to a pretty thick thickness. You can use a pasta machine or an acrylic roller but you want it to be about three millimeters thick so that it's strong because this will be structural in our bracelet. You'll also need a rubber stamp and you want something with some fairly deep impressions so that you'll have some good texture. And then just a little bit of water and you don't need a lot. This is just a release so it won't stick and one simple spritz is all you need. And then you're just going to impress the stamp into your clay. Now if you don't have a woodblock stamp, this is a cling stamp, you'll need something like this, an acrylic block, to press it down. And then it really is best if you stand up so that you can put nice even downward pressure on the stamp. And you just want to rock it ever so slightly, side to side and top to bottom. You don't want to move it so that you end up with a double stamped impression, but you do want to get as deep an impression as you can. Now you can see I do have some areas that are better than others, so I'll be sure to use the nice deeply impressed areas for my piece. The next thing you'll need is a cutter in the shape that you want your toggle to be. It doesn't have to be oval. You could make it rectangular. You could make it really any shape that would work for you. And also a cutter. This is a three-quarter inch cutter to cut the hole for the toggle to go through. And then to make our edges smooth, a little bit of plastic wrap. And you just lay that over your clay and then take your cutter and cut out the section that you want. And you can see as you push down the plastic wrap, it rounds those edges nicely. And then repeat to place the plastic wrap over and cut out the circle. Now make sure you leave a good quarter inch all around the edges. Like I said, this is structural. The toggle clasp will be pushing at it, pulling at it. So we want plenty of clay left around that edge. And then just go ahead and push straight down. And then we also want to add three little holes, a good eighth to three sixteenths of an inch in on the other end. And then you can use your clay blade to lift up the piece, pop out that center bit, and this is a good time to smooth out these ragged edges. You could sand it after baking, but why not do it now? Now often cutters will have a seam and they'll leave a dimple, so you just want to take your finger and smooth that out. It's so much easier to do it now before you bake it. I'm just going to smooth that cut end, that bottom edge, all around. And now this is ready to bake. And we want to have a slightly curved shape, so a little paper tube, like from paper towels or such, is great for baking. And this is just a little aluminum foil tray to keep it from rolling about in the oven. And I'm going to squash this a little bit because I don't want my piece to be quite that curved. So I'm going to squash this into a bit more of an oval and then lay the piece on there and bake it at the manufacturer's recommended temperature for 45 minutes so that it will be nice and strong. And this is what your piece should look like when it comes out of the oven. It's nice and strong. It's a little bit flexible, which it's supposed to be. Polymer clay properly baked is actually quite strong. And next we're going to paint our piece with some metal coatings. The first thing you need to do is add a base coat, which I've done here. I've just used some brass color. And if you'd like to learn more about these Swellagant paints and just how they work, I've made a video all about them, which you can find up here. A couple important things when you're using Swellagant paints to get a patina like this one 
is that you have to put the paint on and then while it's wet add the patina. So I actually added some copper paint and I dabbed it on here and then I added a little bit of iron paint which instead of turning green actually gave me these red spots and you want to add this patina while your paint is still wet. And again, if you check out that Swelligant video, I tell you all about how to use it. So I painted the front and the back with the patina paints, let them dry completely, and then when they were dry, I went back over the top with a dry brush with the copper paint, just to make the patina be in the recesses. And you get this great faux metal looking piece. Now there's one more thing we need to do before uh, we're ready to string our beads, and that's take a little drill bit and just go into these holes and make them a little bit bigger and smoother and now we're ready to string our piece into a bracelet. So the beads I've chosen to be my main focal beads today are these 14 by 10 millimeter Dragon's Blood Jasper beads. I just love the name and I love the look of these beads and you can see that I had them in mind as I was planning this toggle clasp that I wanted to match the green and that's why I added the bits of iron and the red rust to kind of tie in the red as well. And then to accompany these beads I have some wooden beads and an assortment of metal beads in antique gold, brass, and copper. So lots of different metals all mixed up. And we're going to do our stringing on waxed linen twine. So you'll need three 22 inch pieces and on each one you're going to string about five inches of two different strands and I'll show you what I mean here. So what I have here is five inches of my Dragon's Blood Jasper alternating with some of the metal beads and then over here I have five inches of the wooden beads also alternating with some of the metal beads and I've done that with three strands of wax linen twine. So now all I've done here is pull up a loop of the wax linen twine, maybe three or four inches long, so that I can put it onto my toggle clasp. And you just want to fold the twine and then poke it through one of the holes of the bracelet and then just fish your strands of beads through. Now you could do this before you put your beads on. Just make sure all your beads are through and then pull that up snug. And now you could slide your beads against toggle. And you can take this opportunity to put this on your wrist and make sure that you're going to get a good fit. So repeat to add the other two strands of beads to the other two holes. And there are those all tied on. Now the final step is to add our toggle bar. And you may be wondering, well, where's the toggle bar? What toggle bar? We're going to make our own. This is so simple, you'll love it. All you need is a two inch piece of 16 gauge wire and a couple tools. So you're just going to grasp that piece of 16 gauge wire right in the middle with round nose pliers and then bend one end one way and the other end the other way so that they're once again forming a straight line. Once they're forming a straight line again you want to trim any of your ends so with flush cutters so that you have a nice square end and then you're going to bring in a bench block and do a little hammering with a chasing hammer just hammering that flat on both sides if you like you can use the rounded end and add a bit of texture and if you need to you can use a file to file those ends so they're nice and smooth and rounded and what you end up with is something like this a toggle bar when you're making your own toggle bars you just have to make sure double check that that bar is longer than the loop or the hole that you're poking it into. I'm going to tie these together into pairs with an overhand knot. So just slide all those down, grab the two cords and tie them in an overhand knot. And now take these two pieces and tie them onto the loop of my toggle bar. And when you're done with that, just trim off all your excess cords. 
and then that goes through your clasp and your bracelet is all done. Here's another look at the project we made today. I hope you like the idea of making your own toggle clasp component out of polymer clay and then patinaing it to give it the look of old metal. Thanks so much for watching Keepsake Crafts videos. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and a share and check out the other two videos up on the screen. Also be sure you've subscribed to my YouTube channel. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can follow me on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and on my blog. Happy creating. Bye-bye.